Hello everybody, welcome to MCM Mokos Venture and this is Sanem Chol, like, comment, subscribe guys, welcome back. So I'm going to be talking about so many things that probably already you know about in the social media that, that has been circulating and but it's just that I'm thinking that you know what, mm, should I talk about these things, should I not, but just to wrap everything up uh, in one episode. The update on the cruise is the fact that this guy is owing Kaiser Chiefs. That's like the nutshell of everything. He's owing Kaiser Chiefs. So the deal was, if you live within 12 months of your, of your contract, you will pay Kaiser Chiefs. And my assumption is that vice versa, if Kaiser Chiefs release him in the first 12 months of the season, then Kaiser Chiefs would be owing him. So what, what happened is that this guy left before 12 months of age, basically he then breached the contract. And so many of you are angry at him already because of what the media is feeding you. So for me, I believe he played his role and his role was to make a way for Nabi, prepare this season for Nabi, pre-season for Nabi, for the time that he comes and then he continues to build there. I have no grudges against the guy. He can leave. However, now there's nothing sorry about that now there's nothing that i can say uh, about this deal in a sense that there's nothing i can say that no case that you should just let him go but there was a contract there are financial implications if there's a breach of contract i mean there are lawyers that sat down and spoke about these things and therefore that means that now there's a breach of contract so case that says that okay since you left before the contract the first year of the contract or so within the first year of the contract you owe us x amount of money okay sharp because of our relationship it's fine you don't have to pay the entire uh, money that is due to us however you can pay us three months and it looks like um, he can't afford i don't know it looks like by the look of things it looks like he can't afford to pay that money up but 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 others are saying that you know what the Cruz might have to forfeit the deal that he has made there with Moroccan whatever federation and then come back. And others are saying that no, but this guy is a betrayer already. He can't come back. Will Nabi ever receive him back? Because I mean, Nabi will not trust him again. And I'm like, you know what? We don't know the full story. We don't know how Nabi, what was the conversation when Nabi, when he told Nabi that he wanted to pursue this dream. It's a big dream for him, like to manage a big a federation that you know what? No, there's something that you know what? That is out there bigger than this project that uh, I, I'm doing here as an assistant coach. So, therefore, I want to take that and then they kissed and then they, uh, they said each other's goodbyes. But now it might be, it might be the rumor is, if the rumor is, if he can't pay up at least the three months. That is true to Kaiser Chiefs now. He might come back. However, the environment might not be the same. He might not be fully back. If he's not, he might not be fully back emotional, even physical and emotional. He might not be fully back. So mine is how about the club that or the federation where he is going at? They pay Kaiser Chiefs this money that this guy owes. And then he leaves and then he fulfills his dream. So my question is, why can't they pay in advance what Kaiser Chiefs or what is due to Kaiser Chiefs? I don't know. We don't know how this will turn out. However, Nabi then came and said that, you know what, this, this vacant position that has been left by Da Cruz, it's massive. Why it's massive? Because Kaiser Chiefs or this project that I have in Kaiser Chiefs it's bigger than, than I thought. It's bigger than I thought and therefore it needs more people. There's so much work to be done and therefore I need someone to work with. That's why he had hired all the assistants that he hired, all the technical team members that he hired because this project is too big. So he wants to fill that role. Remember I had said that probably Manami might not need to fill that role, but sharp, I did not know better. 
Nabi says that, you know what, I need to fill that role. I need to fill it up and get another person. And then remember, I then suggest that if it does fill it out, it be for me, it would be to get Benny McCarthy because he's a former striker. He can just focus on the offensive play of Keza Chiefs, just like he did with Manchester, just like what now this guy, Fanny is doing at Manchester United. So I don't know how this will turn out. I would gladly receive the Cruz if he was to come back. I'll gladly receive him. But my question, will his heart be there now? I don't know. And I'll not judge him. These things, they do happen. That you know I would want to go and then come back. These things, they do happen. But let's just see how this matter turns out. And then in other news, <laughs> now on transfers, you can say, before I talk about transfers, let me just probably talk about this young boy, Fundo Villagaz. Fundo Villagaz has been called up. Fundo Villagaz has been called up for Amachit, the under 20s. And in him being called up, receiving these call, these call ups, it means that he will, he will miss two games. He will miss two games. One of those games, games is a big game against Sundowns. So he's going to miss Amazulu and Sundowns. So the question is. Should Keza Chiefs allow him to go after his performance, after he has scored the goal? Does he want to go when he has a chance of cementing something at Keza Chiefs and be one of the players who's counted on by the coach? Should he turn it down, this thing, this collab? Should he go? And if he goes, will he ever get a chance? Say that he goes. Hypothetical, he goes and then Yansin, he takes his position. Hypothetical speaking. Or wh whichever player then takes his position and then this guy will have to fight to be in, a, in the 18 men squad at least, to be on the bench at least. What do you do if you're Funda Villagas? Just give me your answer. What do you do as Funda Villagas? Will you turn down the call up and say you want to focus on Kaza Chiefs and you working to get into the starting lineup? Oh, do you go and represent the nation? What would you do? And if you do turn up, turn down this call up, will you be ever be called again in the national team? It's a cheeky situation. I do not know. I don't know how I would advise Fundo to make a decision on this one. What would you do if you were in Fundo Villagas or if you were in his shoes? What would you do? I've seen overseas, I've seen, I've seen time and time again. People saying that, you know what, I don't want to go to the international team. I just want to fight for my team here, cement my team here, cement my starting lineup so that each and every time that an opportunity comes, then I'm playing for this team. I'm making it into the 18 men's team. I'm making it into the, the starting 11. I've seen it happening, but it's rare. It's rare. It's rare that you hear players turning down collapse to represent our international team versus playing for their own team. It's right. I do not know what I would do if I was Fundo Villagas. Tell me what would you do? Okay, moving on to transfers. Ndusha Balala, it looks like the management, the coach, everyone in the team is impressed with him, with his attitude and his contribution. And the rumor is he's offered a contract extension. I'm uploading these news. I'm uploading these news. I'm saying management, well done. We've seen your Janssen being offered a pro contract. We've seen your Ozeman offered a pro contract. We've seen even your Fundo Villagas offered your pro contract and all those things. And this guy's contract, Jews contract is ending next year in 2025 in June. Before January, Keza Chiefs, they need to sign this guy down because he is the future of Keza Chiefs. He has a bright future of Keza Chiefs. I will not let go of this guy. They've invested so much already and we have seen his potential. He hasn't reached his peak. He's far from reaching his peak. Players in South Africa or even in overseas, their peak is at 27. He's far from reaching 27 or 26 there. He's far. So therefore, tie this, down, this guy down, give him an improved contract, and give him five years contracts for five year contracts for example so i'll tie this down this guy down what do you think but for me i'll offer a new contract extension 
lengthy one, a long one. In other news, in other news, Nukovic, Nukovic, Nukovic. They have mutually agreed to terminate his contract with TX Galax. He's currently 33. We are short of a strike. If Ranga is misfiring, we don't have a strike. We know Nukovic, we don't have to work hard. It's like us going back to Blom of, or, or, or having Blom now. We know the, his contributions. And in the first place, Nukovic for me shouldn't have left. For me, he shouldn't have left in the first place. But because of reasons known to the management and the fact that he was also having injuries, I can understand why he was let go. However, I did say that when he was hitting the back of the net, that this guy, no, he deserves to come back. And here's an opportunity to gladly receive Nukovic back. He scored 10 goals in all competitions last season, playing for TX Galax. Imagine playing with your Serino, playing with your Dushavala, playing with all the guys who are there now. He can even score 15 goals, 20 goals this season. So I would welcome him back, but it's not my decision to make. It's not just a management decision to make. It's not even Nukovic decision to make. Both parties, which is the management and Nukovic needs to really see the potential of returning or for them to marry again and then make that decision. But it is said that Keza Chiefs, they want him back. They can sign him even after after Friday, you can sign him after Friday because now he's not uh, tied up by any contract or any club. So for me, but because I would want this guy and he's still fresh there at 33, he can give us two seasons with an option, with an option to add, I believe. So I would sign him because I mean, in this window, there's no, there's no striker that you have signed or there's no striker that is available. It doesn't look like it's strikers markets. What do I mean? There is a time when in the markets that strikers are available and you are spoiled for choice. But at this moment, we don't have options and therefore I'll go for Nikovic. But, 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 but the big question is, will he accept the fact that he's going to play as a backup striker to Nrang? You say that no, but he can be the main striker. Sure, he can be the main striker. However, big teams, this is what they do. They will say, okay, sure, when I add a striker, but we need to negotiate so that you don't cause a rift or you don't cause division in a dressing room. Now players are saying that, ah, but uh, you promised me game time and whatnot. So the coach or the management sits down with the player and say that, look, that's our main striker. Are you fine with playing as a backup striker? Oh, you know what? Both of you can compete. There's no main striker. There's no backup striker. But it looks like for me, I would think that this guy would sign as a backup striker than for him to be the main striker. I don't know why. Don't ask me how I know this. But because of age, I think that he will not play 90 minutes. And because of injuries, the coach will also want to manage him and not play him 90 minutes game in, game out because of his age and his history of injuries. So, therefore, will it be fine to play as a backup strike? I don't know. But that's not the question that I have for you. The question that I have for you is that will you sign back Nukovic? I've given you my answer. Will you sign back Nukovic? Give me the answer. Will you sign Nukovic? In other news, like these are the, like, in conclusion, last news that I'm giving you today. Like, apparently, like, they in Egypt. His team had agreed with this other team, I think, in North Africa, for him to be sold. Because I think they wanted to make space for whoever that they signed and whatnot. And they had agreed. The only thing that was left was the personal terms. And Lique said that I'm not going there. I'm not going to sign them. And the rumor is, I don't know how true is this. I'm just giving you these things so that you can think and so that you can engage. The rumor is he refused because he's like, if I'm not going to stay in Paramis, I'd rather go back home. And that is South African. Others then are linking him with Kezachis because Kezachis, 
needs a strike. I don't know if the coach who wants him or will look at him, but then you might find that it's the media who is linking him back to South Africa with Kaiser Chiefs. Since Kaiser Chiefs is looking for a strike, will you sign him or will you go for Nikovic? Give me that. Just give me the answer. Who would you sign, him or Nikovic? So first things first, you answer me on should you sign Nikovic, yes or no, and why? And then if you are to choose between me, Nikovic and Lique, who would you sign? Guys, I'm out. Give me your thoughts. FC Marcus Fenchan. Sunny here. I love you. Cheers.